So now for our next talk, we'll have um, Chris from Smart City. Um, she will be presenting the, the next talk. Chris is a certified sustainability practitioner and project management professional. She's the executive director at, at Smart City. She trained under the Asian Smart Cities Leaders Program of Asian Foundation and Data Stewardship under GovLab of New York University. She's also a Smart Sustainable Cities instructor with IoT Academy, um, IoT Academy. I hope that was all correct. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. Thanks, Carolina. Um, so now I'll leave you to it. I'll share your screen and good luck. There you go. So again, thank you, Carolina, and thank you for the organizers of Post4G 2021. So again, welcome to the Post4G 2021 event. I am here to share one of our projects in the Philippines, Mapatanda, Mapping for and with the older adults. So as an organization, Smart City, we are a fairly new you know, member of the open street mapping community. So by the end of my talk, we hope to connect and build stronger relations with the wider FOS4G community interested in supporting this project. Again, I am Chris from Smart City, and we're making smart cities open. The push towards smart cities is a really fascinating prospect for the government and frankly for everyone. But here are the current problems that we still fail to address. Number one, it is too tech-centered. The government and even the donors and funders see digital services as a technical engineering problem. What does it mean? It means that the current initiatives simply acquire technologies. It simply acquire apps and digitize the paperwork. So that's it. The digital services are treated separately from you know, the bureaucracy, separately from government policy, and even separately from the capacity of the citizens. Number two, there's a data problem. Before COVID-19, there were and are plans and projects that collect the data for our cities and of the cities. Because of COVID-19, we now have a lot of apps and technologies, but we really don't know where the data goes. And number three, there's no buy-in from the public, which is the users and the beneficiaries of the digital transformation themselves. So for example, the COVID tracing app that we have and we had in the Philippines, after a year, the government finally accepted that it had little to no use in managing the pandemic. And this is why Smart City as an organization exists. Smart City is tackling these problems in a way that is not perhaps as sexy as selling apps and developing sof software or developing um, apps themselves. We firmly believe that openness in general is the only way to go for smart cities and digital transformation. So beyond open data, smart cities should be open by default and our sustainable transformation approach in smart city is one that is open that is holistic and people-centric and how do we do it first we advocate and implement open source free and open source software and interoperability we are also evangelizing open data at the local level and of course we cannot build a portal and expect you know Public the data, publish the data sets and expect people to use this particular po portal and data sets and come. So for us, the long-term strategy really is to boost 
the digital and data literacy at all levels, at all sectors and ages. So be, before we, we really move forward, let me ask this question. So what is the greatest accomplishment of humanity in the last century? Is it, you know, the fact that hum human beings are able to land on the moon? Or perhaps is it the internet, the invention of the internet? Or is it the fact that we double our life expectancy? If you lived in the Philippines during 1900s, your life expectancy is 31 years old. But today, on average, we can now live up to 71 years old and up to 80 years old in the years to come. This is quite am amazing, isn't it, to be honest? So going back to smart cities and digital transformation, one of the unsung you know, benefits of real smart cities and digital transformation is making a community more accessible for people of any age and enabling them to live independently and to have a better quality of life. And yet, when we talk about smart cities and digital transformation, we rarely take into account this reality. The reality that you and me will age sooner or later, that basically everyone ages. So the reality that we need to plan communities for communities that is age-friendly, that is accessible, and that is inclusive. That's why the Mapatanda project is born. COVID, again, made us realize that data, so in particular, open data and digital transformation can indeed offer, you know, the local governments to really future-proof our community. And we believe that older adults are one of the untapped like, resources that we have currently. So imagine you're a citizen or you're a planner or you're coming from a private company or developers and you have and you use the data that we need to create innovative applications and projects to really improve the city and the citizens of any age quality of life. This is quite awesome, isn't it? And this is a real data-driven community where everyone is represented. So what, is exa what exactly is, you know, Mapatanda? Well, the Mapatanda project is a portmanteau, which means a map in the Philippines, MAPA, which is a a portmanteau of map, uh, which is MAPA, which is map in the Philippines, and TANDA, which can mean older adult, but can also mean remember. So what do we seek in MAPA TANDA? MAPA TANDA seeks to improve both the quality and the quantity of data in OpenStreetMap that is important and relevant to members of the older adult an aging population in the Philippines. So what does it mean? It means that this involves adding and cleaning features in OpenStreetMap, such as you know, nursing homes, hospitals, that provide speciali specialized care for the elderly, retirement homes, local offices for senior citizens affairs, Community, community centers and even organizations and other facilities that cater to or perhaps provide, you know, perks and services to older adults. You, will, you might be asking why this particular data? Because this data can be used by the local and national organizations for policy making, for planning, and even for implementing projects and in interventions. Further, the Mapatanda project aims to achieve the following goals. Number one, we want to recruit uh, new 
uh, open seat mapping volunteers. As we've mentioned earlier, Smart City is a fairly new member of the OSM community as an organization in the Philippines. And through this project, we also aim to contribute to building a stronger, you know, a vibrant and active mapping community um, globally as well. So number two, aside from mapping for the older adult population, we would also like to directly engage and map with them by introducing them to OpenStreetMap and how can they contribute. And number three, add offices for senior citizens affairs or OSCA data in OSM for our local um, government units. And of course, we're also pushing for the, we're, we also want to leverage an existing laws under the RA 742 in the Philippines, the cities and municipalities are required to have their own office for senior citizens affairs. These offices are important because they serve as a general information and liaison center to serve the needs of the senior citizens among other functions. So knowing where the OSCA and these offices located in the open street map will benefit the older population as well as the other stakeholders. Number four, we also want to identify existing community leaders with the information to make strategic decisions. So the intended out outcome may come into may include you know community profile that identifies unique resources it identifies issues perhaps concerns and even gaps or in the current offerings of, for older adult population and last but not the least we want to strengthen the open street map knowledge of the local government units in the philippines by connecting them with the OSM community. Where are we at right now? We launched Mapatanda during the Open Data Day in April. We now have a small internal team that started their own research on the points of interest and facilities relevant to senior citizens. We have also connected with one of the organizations in the country which deals directly deals with and really empowers our elder population. That being said, you know, the we have to be honest that the pandemic affects the rollout of our community mapping plans. But at the end of the day, we still believe that mapping can be a powerful community tool to reduce the deficit-based thinking to asset to asset-based about you know the elder population again engaging diverse perspectives can be challenging but we realize that partnering with the local governments nonprofits schools and community groups is effective creating a base map itself can be challenging as well but local planning but local planning agencies and universities Help uh, can provide technical assistance. So at the end of the day, through Mapatanda, we hope everyone will realize that smart cities are age-friendly communities. And age-friendly communities benefit not only the elder adults, but really everyone. The children, the young, the adults, the persons with disabilities, and the older persons. So again, this is uh, quite a short you know, presentation. I am Chris from Smart City, and we're making Smart Cities and Digital Transformation open. If you want to donate, you know, fund, support, intern, or volunteer with us, here's our contact information. Maraming salamat, and if you have any questions, feel free to uh, use the comment box in uh, in our streaming. Thank you.
Thanks a lot, Chris. Um, let's wait a little bit in case we have any questions um, coming from Venueless. It was a, a, great, Lina, talk, a great initiative. Thank you. this way because that's where Venueless is. <laughs> While we're waiting for, for any particular questions and stuff, I would like to put emphasis that we're open for any volunteers globally. Um, we're open, you know, with any particular age. We don't really, we don't really um, have any qualifications. So feel free to volunteer or perhaps intern with us. And I'm really looking forward to be for, for for Smart City to be more active in the phosphority community. That's great. Great to know. And you can write to it also in the um I, I know it's not a job, but it, in the job opportunities chat, maybe. So more people yeah. get to know about this. Thank you. We don't seem to have many questions, probably because it was really clear <laughs> and really good, the presentation. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Now, first question, but also there's a, like a 30 second delay between one and the other. So, uh, how many people are volunteering already? Oh, currently we have 15 active volunteers. So we're going to open another our our new round of internship and volunteers this October. So hopefully we will get more. And it will be on six month basis, but it's really up to you if you want to renew it and, or not. Great. Thank you. We have some more time left, so we can wait a little while um, in case another question shows up. And then around 12, we, we have to close the, the session, but it's been great. A great morning. What time is it over there? It's um, 10 minutes for it to be noon. So mm, OK. We so time for lunch. So yes, time for lunch. <laughs> You're earlier, right? Oh, right. currently I'm in the U.S., so it's still in the morning. It's 8 in the morning. Yeah, but the organization is based in the Philippines, and um, the team itself are based in the Philippines as well. It's late there. <laughs> yeah, it's quite late there. It's probably like 11 p.m., right? almost 11 um, p.m. right now. Oh, that's quite a difference. We have another question. What means do you use to engage with older people to help mapping, especially if they are not familiar with tech? Good yeah, that's, that's the one. Um, since we haven't started uh, using it yet, <clears throat> we're planning to use MapRoulette. Um, but uh, we have to test it out um, through our partner organization in the Philippines because one of the NGOs in the Philippines directly have uh, are the one who's like directly involved with the with the older citizens. So we want to test um, different tools first before we have a fixed, you know, tools to use really. And hopefully you can, you know, we're still shaping this out. And um, the as, as mentioned in my presentation, COVID nineteen really, you know, halt everything. But hopefully, you know, by next year, we will be able to really go on the ground and really, um, really engage with the senior citizens. Because we all know, um, you know, senior citizens are the ones like really affected this during this COVID-19. And we really can't, you know, ask them to meet with us in person and such. But we're really looking forward to use MapRoulette and other, um, perhaps if you guys have other, um, other, you know, tools that you uh, would like to suggest we're open for that as well. Okay, great. Thanks. Yes, it's hard, at least with my my experience with senior people and tech. 
it's hard mm -hmm. <laughs> to get them to open themselves and to participate and to learn. It's it sometimes it's really I I don't think there's many grades like it's or either really easy and they're really enthusiastic or they are like I don't want to learn this because it's that's you know. true. <laughs> that's additional um additional work for them. What we're looking at is to have like a partner, like a team approach, wherein perhaps their grandkid will be the will be with them, and mm -hmm. the, who's the one who's like really using the tool itself, but still the you know the older individual will still be there, um, telling us what to do. That sounds good. To have it's, a. Like, Yes, I I don't know in the Philippines at the, um in the Philippines the household uh, mostly if if it's like the elder population live with their you know grandkids and stuff so the grandkids are the one who's like really if if they need something they're the one who will go to the internet and and they're the one who's like okay I cannot find any, any information for this so that's another approach that we're looking at because um, we realize the same thing. Like, well, me, I myself, and I, you know, I, I deal with my grandparents and such. Uh, it'll be a hard, uh, a hard, what they call this, a challenge. challenge, a challenge <laughs> itself to engage them and use use um, any particular tool, digital tool and such. Yes, yes, I remember when I taught my grandmother how to send a uh, text message. And in the beginning, she was like, no, no. And then she constantly texted me. <laughs> it's like that barrier. The front door like, well. Yes, it, it opened up like it's a barrier. But yes, it's a challenge. But I think it's really positive. Yeah. If you can like overcome it. Well, That's so, why our first approach really is to partner with a particular, you know, a particular organization, which really are the ones like really involved in engaging this particular elder, um, elder individuals. Because according to them, you know, they were able to engage them in certain activities that, you know, uh, surprisingly, um, we find it hard to 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 engage them. In, in certain activities, but they were able to do such. So they have active members as well. And I feel like it will be a good opportunity for us to tap into. Okay. Thank you very much for your talk, for your time. And we will be seeing around. Okay. We should um, end the, the recording here. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, You're everyone. Welcome. Thank you, Carolina. No problem. Thank you. Bye. Bye.